Chapter 2 The Teachings of the True One From The Oriental Rose Or The Teachings of Abdul Baha Which Trace the Chart of the Shining Pathway By Mary Hanford Ford This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org chapter two the teachings of the true one the bob was not long left in peace however his wanderings from place to place his escapes from death were for some time marvellous his enforced separation from his beautiful young wife added to the pathos of this tragic situation his bridal day was scarcely over before imprisonment snatched him forever from her side for a long time she refused to sleep in a bed and flung herself upon the hard floor declaring that if she could not share his incarceration at least she would weep through the dark hours of each night at last however the true one wrote her a touching letter in which he said do you not know that when you lie upon the floor i feel all its hardness and that when you weep my eyes also are drowned in tears after that the poor lady wept no more though the sorrow of her heart never lessened for the wonderful one who had been with her for so short and blissful a moment at one time it was planned to destroy the bob by secret assassination the authorities did not dare venture upon a public execution because the true one had won a position of such dignity through his wisdom and beauty of character that this did not seem to be advisable the shock to public feeling would be too great so the arrangement was made that his house should be entered on a certain date by a band of apparent thieves who would destroy him after his cruel death the government would decently regret the distressing event the date for this catastrophe was appointed but suddenly cholera broke out with such violence that all fled from the town the bob also took his departure and as a result was protected for some time by the governor of esfahan who became a believer and might have kept the true one in concealment still longer but he died suddenly and his nephew who succeeded him was amazed to discover whom his uncle had been harboring he demanded of agassi that what should be done with the bob the vizier was the implacable foe of the great teacher and knowing his eloquence and charm was determined that the shah should not come in contact with him so he sent him from place to place on one excuse or another he appeared before various councils was insulted and questioned but invariably astonished his persecutors by the calm and the perfect illumination with which he met both cruelty and inquiry on one occasion he was asked what do you mean by the bob he replied have you not heard the statement i am the city of knowledge and ali is its gate as these were Mohammed's words in regard to Ali his successor, and the Bob's interlocutor was one of the Mohammedan clergy, no farther comments were necessary. Again he had been speaking with supreme inspiration, and used the words ear, eye, in the singular. Mullah Mohammed interrupted him with the query, Why do you say eye and ear? when we have two eyes and two ears oh my soul that means you must listen was the response open the ear of thy heart and comprehend god another asked him jeeringly who was it wished you good morning and gave you the title of bob i am that one for whom you have waited a thousand years replied the true one 
and by what can we recognize you proceeded the interrogator by my inspired utterance said the prisoner with imperturbable calm thereupon his investigators demanded that he should improvise upon some subject and when he did so they exclaimed but we do not understand anything that you say then the inspired one declared whence were you able to comprehend that the koran is the word of god that which you say of the holy scriptures you should repeat here he was condemned at length to incarceration in the fortress of maku its governor had heard much of the bab's teachings and had wondered at them wherever the true one went in spite of his persecution and the difficulties thrown in his way in spite of the public scorn and vile accusations of the clergy conversions multiplied in constant and unexplainable fashion ali khan makui had weighed the words that had been repeated to him he sympathized heartily with the bob's thunderings against the corruption and abuses of the age yet he feared to put faith in him lest he might prove an impostor when the bob arrived at the fortress which was perched upon a mountain difficult of access he asked immediately for permission to go to the public baths he was always immaculate in his person and scrupulous in bathing and in his writings are many injunctions to his followers that they resist the filthy habits of the unregenerate man he craved at this moment the refreshment of the bath after his tedious and dusty journey the governor had in his stables a young horse so vicious and dangerous that no one could ride him it was in fact perilous to approach him and almost impossible to put saddle and bridle upon him the idea flashed into the mind of the governor that he should offer the bob this charger if he mounts him and reduces him to docility reflected ali khan i shall take it as a sign from god that i am to recognize him as the promised one whom he claims to be if on the contrary he is thrown and killed in his struggle with the beast the state will be easily rid of a bad man who is only a false prophet guilty of deluding his fellow men it required several men to accouter the horse and conduct him to the entrance of the bath the attendant explained that the governor wished to save his guest the fatigue of climbing the hill and had sent him his own steed with a little escort to do him honor the bob approached the creature which was rearing and prancing in rage at the compulsion that had been put upon him the stallion paused trembling as the bob caressed its quivering head and spoke to it with extreme kindness after a moment the bob commanded the groom to release the bridle he mounted the beautiful animal and rode away with the utmost ease in fact the tradition of the event recalls that the horse sweat profusely in his effort at absolute gentleness in bearing this loving burden a crowd of people who had watched the result of the experiment knowing the horse and divining the governor's intention rushed into the bathhouse and secured in various receptacles the water in which the true one had bathed while those who were too late to obtain this wiped up the remaining moisture with towels and preserved them as relics the governor meanwhile what must have been his feeling when he saw his prisoner approaching his furious charger reduced to the submissive temper of a lady's pony he fell at the feet of the true one and confessed his faith to him declaring that he was his faithful servant for all time the bob remained in the fortress for nine months in comparative freedom receiving all who came he wrote much and conducted an enormous correspondence and the sojourn must have offered a welcome respite to the hunted and persecuted saviour of his kind 
one great word which reappeared constantly in the teaching of the bab and which lends its color with even more positive decision to the utterances of baha'u'llah and abdul baha is that of unity the degenerate followers of muhammad like the degenerate christians had become purely partisan each considering his own religion the only true one was eager to send missionaries with sword or book to convert the world and each was convinced that only his particular cult could save the soul the bab cried aloud the truth that all the sublime prophets of god are revealers of his light moses and zoroaster christ and muhammad have led mankind to god and all have been inspired by the same divine breath of the infinite one each prophet who comes builds upon the foundations of his predecessor and brings to a greater clearness the conception of god in the human consciousness so the latest message is necessarily the most complete though each possesses the same essentials and all lead to god thus the bab recognized the sacred books of the world as divinely inspired the bible the quran the rig veda the zendavesta were all a part of the golden flood of heavenly knowledge given to the world to create in the mind of man a true and reverent conception of the ethereal and loving spirit that is behind all being so the bab regarded his own appearance as a fulfillment of prophecies not only in the quran but in the zendavesta and the ancient hindu scriptures as well as in the bible he believed his mission was for the evangelization of the world and that the coming of the wonderful day of god he heralded had been foretold by divine messengers in many languages his conception of god was exceedingly lofty he revealed the creator as pure spirit manifested in all things but also hidden in his unmanifested essence which is quite beyond the comprehension of ordinary mortals but to advance man must arrive at a knowledge of god and therefore the prophets or manifestations of god have lived as pure mirrors everywhere reflecting the light of the mighty central sun the minds of men in their turn receiving the radiance of these lovely mirrors become filled with the true conception of god and having once accepted the vital imprint of truth grow in grace and add their touch to the increasing stature of spiritual manhood civilization is thus the result of the applied knowledge of god that the different prophets have brought to the universe for whether or not one yields faith to them they have been among all nations the enlighteners of the earth the brilliant torches of progress so far in advance of their contemporaries that almost invariably they have been martyred for the truth they proclaimed in later ages it often happens that the independent thinker is more filled with the spirit of the original message than its theology building upholder so that voltaire was as deeply indebted to christ as calvin and galileo was nearer to the divine source of wisdom than the church which condemned him as a heretic the writings of the bab were numerous considering his short mission and are of course the result of the leisure rising from his continued confinement among these the bayan or clear exposition is most remarkable and together with the seven proofs is most generally read none of his books have yet been translated into western languages so that we are obliged to depend upon the slight transcripts that have been granted us by arabic and persian scholars for an opinion of them besides these important volumes however there is a mass of wonderful letters prayers and addresses all illuminating and only less remarkable in character than the production of baha'u'llah many of the bab's letters are exceedingly vivid and eloquent and attest not only to his vital inspiration 
but that sensitiveness and feeling which so endeared him to all with whom he came in contact here is one o thou who art sorrowful i have read thy letter and thy sorrow and thy tears have filled me with grief but as i am to-day in paradise i obey the command of god and say glory to god who has protected me from torment this god is sublime and beyond all the qualities which men could attribute to him now thou also even as i glorify god who has kept thee also from torment in truth our god is he who pardons he who is the provider now o man do not be distressed by anything for thy distress affects me do not weep for anything for thy tears cause mine to flow and henceforth i can give thee no orders for i love thee be now firm in obedience to god in truth thou art firm in the friendship of god be patient in the misfortunes that assail thee for what thou seest is the way of fortune it is not extraordinary that such torments assail the friends of god it is not strange that men gather to the name of him who is the cause of the creation of all who is the primitive will himself the name of mahavia fie upon fortune fie upon fortune another written at maku to the father of aga sayed hossein is very touching the latter was the secretary of the bab who was condemned to execution with his beloved master but feigned a recantation of his faith at the last moment according to the bab's wish in order to write an account of his last hours for the consolation of the bereaved friends of the cause the communication runs as follows in truth i have read the letter which thou hast sent to thy son may god recompense thee for thy great sorrow and for thy great patience in this sorrow may god increase thy patience and as for me because i love death i say for you these four verses o death thou who permittest none to escape come and deliver me also from the difficulties of this world thou art o death the one who has taken all my friends truly it is in thee that i see the safety of all those who love me o death ever thou dost turn towards one of my friends as if some one had pointed him out to thee the remainder of the episode is filled with those tender and intimate details which one addresses only to the beloved it had been inspired by news of the death of a son and brother in his secretary's family and shows how clearly the bob felt the deprivation of each one in the family circle at the loss of this cherished member some of the bob's writings while in the fortress of maku were almost pathetic in their recognition of the oppression that must follow the illumination that enveloped him and rendered his earthly pilgrimage so difficult he says in one passage the fruit of religion is to believe in the manifestation of the bab and they have imprisoned him at maku he says again that all had much respect for him while he remained a simple gentleman but heaped insults and scorn upon him as soon as he became a manifestation of god he reproaches the mohammedans that they expected the coming of the mahdi with such impatience and imprisoned him as soon as he appeared in another curious passage he pities the mohammedans who refuse to recognize him because he declares in your eagerness to serve god you flout and distress him he goes on speaking of god in his own person but not in blasphemy as one might imagine at first he speaks thus in that recognition of the spirit of illumination upon him which led christ to say i and the father are one there is no other way to the father save through me the bob continues in spite of the utterances 
which distill from my power and the treasure of which rests in this person the bob in spite of the utterances which issue from his lips only by my permission behold with no shadow of right you have immured him on the summit of a mountain the inhabitants of which are not even worthy to quote them near him that is near me is no one not even one of the letters of life of my book besides his two hands which are my hands he has not a single attendant to light his lamp for him at night and behold the men of the earth have been created solely for his existence it is by his generosity that they are full of joy and they do not give him one light again his sense of exaltation drives away the consciousness of suffering and he says all that belongs to the man of paradise is in paradise this solitary chamber in which i am and which has not even a door is to-day the greatest of the gardens of paradise for the tree of truth is planted there all the atoms which compose it cry in truth there is no other god than god in truth i am god and there is no other god than me the master of the universe he says in his letter to the shah which he begins with his customary exalted praise of divine unity and now let me tell you a secret this man has imprisoned in my person all the prophets all the saints and all that the knowledge of god has embraced and there is no sin of any degree under which i have not groaned again he says as for me i am that point of god whence all that exists has found existence i am that face of god which dies not i am that light which is never extinguished he who recognizes me is accompanied by all good he who repulses me has behind him all of evil the light of god which shone upon the mountain for moses is my light he declares farther he discusses the passage of the quran in which the return of the imam is foretold it is the fourth verse of the thirty-second chapter and runs god conducts the affairs of the world from heaven to earth then recalls all to himself for a day the duration of which is a thousand years of our computation this closing of the gate of knowledge was in two sixty of the mohammedan era when the twelfth imam disappeared and the bab quotes the question of mufazl who demanded when the mahdi would arise and the answer of the imam who replied he will manifest in the year sixty and his name will be a great one this of course indicates the often repeated year of twelve sixty corresponding to our date of eighteen forty four which was that of the bob's manifestation one of the most touching of these utterances is that in which he speaks of his coming successor the glory of god i am only the suggestion of what he will be he says and may the followers of my bayan not persecute him as the followers of the quran have persecuted me end of chapter two the teachings of the true one from the oriental rose or the teachings of abdul baha which trace the chart of the shining pathway by mary hanford ford read by nicholas james bridgewater